In today's operating system class, we will see the user authentication and one of the important topic from 5th unit. In today's class, we will see what is mean by user authentication and different types of user authentication like password based authentication, multi-factor authentication, certificate based authentication, biometric authentication and one time password. And we will see all those things one by one. First let us see the user authentication. User authentication means verifying the identity of user. Okay? The user that is verifying the identity of user is called as user authentication and it verifies the identity and other credentials of user who attempting to gain access to computer resources or networks. Okay, that is only the authorized users are allowed to access our computer. Okay, for that we can use this authentication. Here the authentication preventing the unauthorized users from gaining access to computer resources or uh, preventing the potentially damaging the system or preventing the stealing information or causing other problems. Because if we allow the unauthorized users to access our systems, we can face so many problems. Okay, to overcome all those things, we have to authorize a particular person, only those authorized person are allowed to access our system. For this, we have to verify whether the person is authorized or not. Okay, for that, we have to use this term authentication, that is user authentication. User authentication consists of three tasks. First one is identification, authorization and authentication. First let us see what is identification. Identification means when a user claims an identity is called as identification. Uh, the identity may be a username, a process ID, a smart card or any other thing which may be uniquely given to all the user, all the user and these items can be used for the identification of user, right. And second one is authorization. Authorization means uh, it is the process of verifying one's identity. Okay, verifying the user identity is called as authorization. For example, when a user enters uh, his own user ID and password, then the authorization will verify the password that the user enter is the owner of the username or not. Okay. So, verifying the user is called as authorization and second one is authentication, sorry the third one is authentication. Here the security technique for determining the user's privilege or eligibility to execute specific task in the system. Okay, so this is called as authentication that means the user, uh, the particular user is accessing the allocated resources or not. Okay, that is called as authentication that is the authorization procedure specifies the role based powers a user can have in the system. Okay, what type of role the user is going to play in the system. Okay, after they have been authenticated on eligible candidate. Okay, suppose if the person is uh, allowed to take printer that is take print out on a printer but the person is also trying to access the scanner, then this is the unauthorized access, right. So, the authentication will verify whether the person is accessing only the printer or not, okay. So, so this is called as authentication. The user authentication is based on uh, one of the three things. What are the three things? First one is the user's possessions of something that is what the user is having uh, the identity it may be a key or id card or whatever it may be the object used for identification and second one the user's knowledge of something that means uh, the user identifier that is user id and password okay user id and password that belongs to user's knowledge and the third one is an attribute of the user, attribute of the user means biometric authentication, okay, fingerprint, retina that is eye retina printer and uh, the signature everything will be 
come under the attribute of user okay that is the user's object user's knowledge that is user id and password and third one is user's attribute by using these three uh, the authentication will verify the user is authorized user or not password based authentication passwords are most common methods of authentication that is all the users are allowed to create their own password uh, and based on the password the authentication will verify whether the given user id and password are belongs to the authorized user or not okay and the passwords can be in the form of string of characters numbers and special characters okay and the strong password means the combination of letters numbers and special characters okay all the users are asked to create only the strong password then only the information that is the sensitive informations will be prevented from the attackers they can try the phishing attack okay phishing attacks means the hacker will try all the possible combinations of password until they find out the correct password but most of the people use only the very simple password instead of creating a reliable password because the simple passwords are easy to remember but this is not sufficient in protecting online information those information may be very sensitive and here hackers can easily guess the user's credentials by running all possible combinations of password until they find a match so users have to create the strong password multi factor authentication which is otherwise called as mfa and it is another important authentication method which requires two or more independent ways to identify a particular user that is apart from user id and the password the user have to enter another uh, identification for verifying the user okay hence the mfa increase the confidence of user by adding multiple layers of security by adding multiple layers of security what is the other layers apart from user id and password the code generated from user smartphone uh, captcha test fingerprint voice biometric or facial recognition okay so hence the mfa that is multi factor authentication is very good method uh, which will defend against most account hack hacking the account is somewhat difficult in this mfa and uh, this is also having some drawback that is people may lose their phones or sim cards hence they cannot be uh, generate the authentication code this is the drawback of mfa that is multi factor authentication the next one is certificate based authentication which is used to identify the user by using digital certificate okay every user have to produce the digital certificate for entering into the system right this digital certificate is an electronic document this document contains the digital identity of the user okay since this identity contains the public key and the digital signature of certificate authority here the certificate authority who will provide the public key and private key for the users that is you unique private key for all the users a common public key and unique private key for all the users and in the digital certificate it is having the public key as well as uh, the digital signature of certificate authority right the user have to provide their digital certificate whenever they sign into the server okay now the server verifies the trustworthiness of the digital signature Uh, because the digital signature contains the public key and the digital signature of certificate authority isn't it so the server will verify those two things and it will uh, conclude that whether the uh, user is authorized user or not okay the server then use cryptography to confirm that the user has a correct private key associated with the certificate or not okay so if for all the user they are having their own private key 
the private key is provided by the certificate authority only ok. So, the server use cryptography to confirm that the user has correct private key associated with this certificate. Biometric authentication, this is a security process that relies on unique biological characteristics of an individual, this is important. Okay, every person is having its own unique biological characteristics for example, uh, the fingerprint and iris pattern etc. So, based on those biological characteristics the particular user is being identified. Okay, so, this biometric authentication technologies are used by consumers, governments, private corporations uh, which includes airport, military and national borders. Nowadays almost everybody are using this bio, biometric authentication okay, because this will provide a high level security without affecting the user okay, because only the particular user has is having its own biological identity. The common biometric authentication methods includes the facial recognition, fingerprint scanner, speaker recognition and the eye scanners. The first one is facial recognition that is uh, the face characteristics of an individual. So, each and every individual are having their own biometric facial characteristics and based on that we can identify the particular user. Okay, And second one is fingerprint scanner and this is the unique pattern of individual's fingerprint. Right? Nowadays the fingerprint scanners are very popular and the next one is speaker recognition which is known as voice biometric. Okay? So, this authentication examines the speaker's speech pattern um, for the formation of specific shape and sound qualities. How uh, the particular user is going to speak ok and third that is the last one is scanners, eye scanner, eye scanner is for iris recognition and retina scanner. <coughs> Here a bright light will be projected on eye and search for unique pattern of a particular user's eye ok based on that this authentication method can verify the particular user. The token based authentication, uh, this technology enables user to enter their credentials once and receive a unique encrypted string of uh, the random characters in exchange. Okay, once they enter all those details then immediately they will get an encrypted string then this is called as token. Okay, and this token is used to access the protected system instead of entering uh, all the credentials that is user id, password and other details uh, again and again. See once they have entered and the system will create an encrypted text and this is called as token. Okay? The digital token proves that the user already have access permission. No need to enter all those things again and again. The next one is one time password, it is otherwise called as OTP. OTP is an automatically generated numeric or alphanumeric string of characters and which is used to authenticate a user for a single transaction or for login session. Okay? And the OTP is more secure than static password, okay? especially a user created password which can be weak or reused across multiple accounts. This is important. Nowadays maximum users are using the same password for uh, most of their online accounts. Okay? In that case, we can use the OTP for securing the uh, user details. And this OTP are a form of strong authentication which provides better protection to e-banking, corporate network and other system containing sensitive data. And uh, this OTP protects from unauthorized network access. Okay? The sensitive system resources and end users digital identities will be very much protected if a person is using one time password. 
up to this we have seen the user authentication and uh, in this class uh, we discussed what is user authentication after that the various authentication methodologies that is password based authentication multi factor authentication certificate based authentication biometric authentication and one time password and the next class we will see another important topic from 50 unit thank you